Hi, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today starts a new series here on Michael's Fish Room. Basic fish keeping skills you need to be successful in the hobby. Today's video, probably the most important skill you need, how to test your water using the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. Grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage. Stand by. Welcome back fishy folks if you haven't done so already if you consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell I'd really appreciate it so you know when I release new videos or go live speaking of new videos you may notice this video is released on a Saturday my last video which I'll put a link up here with my uh, good friend Norm from Australia real deal marine biologist by the way um, was released on Wednesday. Now that's not a mistake, even though I've made that mistake before. I'm changing the days that I release my videos from Thursday and Sunday to Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, trying to see if I can get a little bit of bump in, in viewership and subscribers. I have some goals for this year. I'm a little bit behind on my goals. So, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. So today we're gonna talk about the API uh, master test kit, freshwater master test kit, and how to test your water using this kit. Now, admittedly, I haven't tested my water in probably 18 months, if not longer. Um, is that the best thing? No. Uh, but you definitely need to know how to test your water, and especially if you have new aquariums or you're new to the hobby, you need to know how to learn to use this. Now, if you're new to the hobby and you're going to ask questions on Facebook and you say your water parameters are fine, people really shouldn't help you because how do you know they're fine you don't in most cases if you bring water to your local fish store they're gonna tell you they're fine you need to know exactly what ammonia nitrite nitrate and pH are at the minimum if they test for hardness that's great now if they don't use this test that's fine they can use test strips I will for sure be going over how to use test strips too so very important to know how to test your water this is sort of the gold standard, at least in America, for testing water. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. It's about $20 on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. I'll put links down below for everything I talk about. If you have a local fish store in town, it's probably gonna be a little bit more money, maybe $25 or $30. If you can, you definitely should support your local fish store. If you don't, if you're in a rural part of the country or there are no more local fish stores, just big box stores, and you wanna support me, you can buy this off Amazon. I do make a couple shekels because it is an Amazon affiliate link. Now, this is a brand new kit, test kit. I just opened it before we started videoing because uh, I actually made some bloopers with it by accident. So you may see those at the end, stand by for those. All right, so open the test kit. It's got this fancy foam thing, big deal. Let me put this over here. What do we have? We have these test tubes. Now these test tubes are pretty fragile. They do break quite easily. You can buy replacements. Uh, sometimes your local fish store has them. If not, you can definitely buy them on Amazon. There will be a link down below, as I said. What else? Uh, we have a pH solution. We have a high range pH solution. But am I, what's the difference? pH is pH. Well, sort of. This particular test will only test, I believe, up to about 7.4, 7.5. And this one will go all the way up to 8. So if you sick of guys that like the high uh, pH, you want the red one the high range. Uh, if your pH is between 6 and 7.4, you go with the low. If you're not sure if it's high, if it's like 7.3, 7.4, and you want to check, you can go with this one too. I think this one goes down to about 7.2 also. It's possible we'll read the direction and find out. Then you have two ammonia test solutions, and they're the yellow one. Then you have one, sorry, one nitrite solution and two nitrate solutions now the night all of them you have to shake but the nitrate bottle two you have to shake the ever living bejesus out of in fact the directions do tell you and i only know this because i just read them because i didn't remember shake vigorously for 30 seconds we're going to do that when we do our test all right folks uh, i'm going to put this here all right to fill the water you could certainly uh you know dip this in the tank and, and then pour some out, pour some more in. It's a bit of a, a challenge and a pain in the behind if you ask me. I use a syringe. I'll put links down below uh, for syringes on Amazon as well as pipettes which 
basically look like little turkey basters. Um, this one, that's how it works. You gotta make the noise. Uh, I'm lucky, my wife is an RN. She brings these home by accident from the hospital. These are for uh, saline. Um, I just take the saline out of them and clean them out and use them for the fish room. I use them in different places, but great thing to have. All right, so how does it work? Go over to a, your fish tank. I, I'm gonna use my blue metallic mosaic tank here. Uh, I fill my syringe up. It holds a little more than 10 milliliters. And then you can see there's that line right there. I'm gonna fill it up to that line with this syringe. As I get close to the end, I'm gonna slow down so I don't go over. There's one. And here's the other. And this is how I do it. This is how I recommend you do it. You certainly can try another method that works for you. But if you're using the API Freshwater Master Test Kit, this is how I recommend doing it. Fill the third syringe. Sorry, the third test tube. And then the final test tube. So now we have all of our test tubes right up to the five milliliter line and we're good to go. Now, I know my pH is right around 7.2, at least the last time I checked it, it was. So I'm gonna use the regular pH solution and the directions for this are pretty simple. Uh, it says it right on the bottle, add three drops and they want you to keep the uh, bottle in a, let me keep the lid on, in a completely vertical fashion so all your drops are as even as possible. You want consistency. Now in most cases you don't even have to squeeze, you just let the drops fall into the test tube, just like this. Three drops, count with me. One, two, three. Now a drop down on the outside, I don't really care. You take one of your test tube lids, shake it, there's my pH. Well, Mike, what does that mean? Well, you grab your freshwater master test kit instructions, and on the back, it has this fancy card with colors. And what you do, here, I'm gonna stand up. What you do, this one is the pH right here, right? And you just hold your test tube up next to it, and you can see, I don't know how the light is showing it, but for me, it's uh, right about seven, seven, it's about seven, six, eight, seven. So it's a little lower than I anticipated, but pretty close. Here's the thing about pH. You know, can guppies survive in seven pH, six pH? Bah. Most guppies now that you're gonna buy are tank raised and probably, I'm done with this, so I'm putting it back. I'm not using the high range, so I'm putting it back. Uh, most guppies are tank raised in, Water that's nowhere near the water that they were born in, or or they the, their natural habitat, if you will. So, yes, guppies can stand the whole range of pH from six to eight. Um, typically, lower pH will have a lower hardness of water, so that might not be great for them. You may have to add some amenities to the water, but yes, they can survive. So, six, eight, seven for my pH, which is fine. Um, Again, another thing about pH, don't don't chase pH, don't sweat pH. If your pH is 6.2, try to keep fish that like 6.2. All right, next test you would do in order, if you're going in order, is ammonia. And ammonia is two bottles, and the instructions say add eight drops from bottle one, add eight drops from bottle two, and then shake it and wait five minutes. It's important to know if you have to shake in between tests. And the only one you have to do that for is the uh, the nitrate test. All right, here we go. Eight drops, let me count in Japanese. Ichi, ni, son, yon, go, roku, nana, hachi. I'm gonna put this bottle one back. Make sure it's a little shaken up. And then eight drops, bottle two. Here we go, folks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we shake it. Had a little bit of a leak. Now, here's what I do, and you could do whatever you want. I take an ammonia bottle, I put it there, I put the test tube in front of it. Now I know that's ammonia. A good, a good thing is this card, right? You can see ammonia test, I'm sorry, pH test, and ammonia test, and nitrate test, all zeros are yellow. So it might be hard to see 
you know, if, if you don't know what the test is, you might not remember which one it is. You know, if you're not sure if it's ammonia or nitrate, that's why I put those there. Hope I explained that right. All right, five minutes. Set a timer. Hey Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Okay, your timer is set for five minutes. I hope your Siri doesn't set a timer for five minutes. Now the next one we're gonna do is nitrite. Nitrite is this test, NO2, and uh, it's just add five drops, wait five minutes. We're gonna shake it. Open the lid. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. Put our lid. Boom. Now, I can't set another timer, so here's what I am going to do. I'm gonna look at my timer. And it says four minutes left. So when my ammonia is done, I'm gonna add another minute for the nitrate. All right, folks. One left, two nitrate bottles, 10 drops each. This particular test, you wanna add 10 drops shake the bottle with the top on it, then add 10 more drops. The instructions say to shake this one good and shake this one vigorously for 30 seconds. Ready? I hope someone's counting, because I'm not. It's not 30 seconds yet. Vigorously shake it. Why? Well. The chemicals in here could crystallize if they stay on the bottom too long. That's about 30 seconds. Sometimes you gotta smack the bottom, but if you get a nitrate test that looks all wonky, shake the bejesus out of your bottles. This is test one, it doesn't need to be shaken as much. 10 drops, then shake the test tube. Here we go. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Put the lid on. Shake it. That's it. Now, I'm going to put the lid on here. I'm going to put this bottle right here. I'm going to take the lid off without spilling any. Make sure you get a good shake again. Here we go. Ten drops. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shake it, put it down, check my timer. Two minutes, so we gotta add three minutes for the nitrate. Now, folks, we have a couple minutes to talk. We have two minutes left for the ammonia test, so we can talk. Don't stress yourself over these tests. They're a pretty good indicator but they're not an exact science because your drops may not be even, your water may not be even. There's many factors that go into this test. And if your fish are acting funny, this is the first thing you should do. First thing you should do is check your water parameters. You should also keep a record of your water parameters. While we're waiting, let's talk about when do you check your water parameters. If you're in the middle of a cycle, the only way to know if your tank is cycled is if you check your water parameters. Now, who can tell me when your tank has completed the nitrogen cycle? Anyone? Anyone? Ooh, 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 I know, I know. Yes, you in the pink shirt, bald head, very handsome. You know your fish tank has completed the cycle when ammonia is zero, nitrites are zero, and you are showing nitrates. So what does that mean? That means the beneficial bacteria have broken down the ammonia into nitrite. Different beneficial bacteria have then broken down the nitrite into nitrates, completed the cycle. Now, there's a whole other things that we can talk about with the cycle, but that's the basis of it for now, okay? Okay. Um, let's see how much time we have left, folks. 40 seconds. Um, what else would you like to see in this, basically, how to fish tank stuff for beginners? I'm going to do, uh, obviously, this one. I'm going to do test strips. I'm going to do gravel vac. I'm going to do how to clean a hang-on-back filter, how to clean a sponge filter, how to clean a box filter. 
Uh, if there's anything else you would like to see, do me a favor, go to the comments down below, leave me a comment. Hey Mike, I would like to see this for your uh, how to fish tank series. Okay folks, uh, freshwater master test kit, how to, directions come in a couple different languages, ammonia is done. So now, hey Siri, set a timer for one minute. One moment. What, what are you, busy? Okay, so if we look at ammonia, you want ammonia to be yellow. Bright yellow, right? See, bright yellow. Now, this looks bright yellow to me. Now, on camera it's coming through a little tiny bit of green, but here, it looks bright yellow. I'm gonna say I have zero ammonia, which Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. is the way to do it. Siri is a crackhead. Hey Siri, set a timer for 45 seconds. Just a moment. Anyway, um, what, did you, what would you do if you had high ammonia? Well, there's a couple things you could do water change or add Seachem Prime or Seachem Safe. Please try again. She is a crackhead. I got another 15 seconds for nitrite, so. If you had high ammonia, you could change the water, uh, change 50% of the water or so. You could also uh, use Seachem Prime or Seachem Safe, double dose it. That will neutralize the ammonia. Now your test will still show it, but it'll neutralize the ammonia, make it safe for your fish. So those are just two things you do if you had high ammonia. All right, let's take a look at the nitrate test. Light blue is what you want for zero. Again, nitrite is uh, deadly to fish. So if we take the test, you can see it's light blue. We have zero ammonia. Now, nitrates. This is a little bit more tricky. I'm gonna say we have about a minute left. I'll take a look in a second here. Some people say under 20 parts per million nitrates. Some people say under 40. Some people say under 80. When you look at your, your list here, your, your card, the difference between 40 and 80 is virtually nothing. Like, I'm half blind, so I can't even see it, right? I don't even know what it, like, it's hard for me to tell the difference. And then you got your test tube, so, you know, it's hard to tell. But let's just, for, for the sake of this video, anything on over 40 parts per million, you should change your water. Let's talk about why do we change water real quick. I'm gonna, quick lesson here, folks. Why do you change water in a fish tank? That's right, to get rid of nitrates. If your cycle is working and intact, you don't need to worry about ammonia and nitrite because beneficial bacteria are breaking those down into nitrates. That's right, folks, nitrates. If you have a heavily planted tank, you very well may have low nitrates always because your plants sucking them up. Now this tank has a fair amount of java moss and some rickia and, I don't know, I think this is like a little tiny sword or crypt or something, I don't know, I'm dripping all over myself. But I also do 10% water changes daily with my auto water change system. Now if we look at the nitrate test, it is a deep orange, which if we look here on our test strip, right, see it like that. I'm gonna say it's, like is it 10, is it 20? I'm gonna say it's 10 parts per million. That's what I'm gonna go with. So my water is pH of seven, ammonia zero, nitrate zero, nitrate 10 parts per million. That's fine, it's perfect. Um, if you ever go on Facebook and ask for help or say my fish are acting funny or dying and they ask for water parameters, try to say it in the right order. pH, ammonia, nitrite nitrate and then if you have you know kh and gh certainly add that but that'll be another another video by the way also i think corey just did one as well anyway folks that's the quick and easy way to do to use the freshwater master test kit by api if you have any questions let me know down in the comments below if you have any more tips and tricks on using this test kit also let me know down in the comments below Hope you guys liked it. Hope you enjoy this series. Don't forget, 
to check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com, where you can buy guppies and plecos I breed right here. Hope you guys have a great day. Oh, by the way, Bayern Champions League winners 3-1. to one. Fishy folks, if you're new to this channel, do me a favor. Would you consider subscribing and then hitting that notification bell? Boop! So you know if I release a new video or I go live. Now, some of you might have noticed this video is out on Saturday and my last video was out on Wednesday. That wasn't a mistake, although I made that mistake. Uh, I'm changing my release days to Wednesday and Saturday. Just trying to switch it up a little bit. You know, I have goals for, uh, for YouTube and not as close as I want to be to hitting my goals. So if you like the channel, definitely consider subscribing. Tell all your friends. Don't worry about the uh, the sump pump. It's fine. And don't don't be like I just dropped. I just put my fat arm on the things and drop the things. Suck. Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today starts a new series on Michael's Fish Room. A series on basic fish keeping skills that you need to be successful. Today's test, today's test, what a maroon.